There was Newton, believer in God, law of gravitation, one of the most brilliant scientists of all time without question. And there's Stephen Hawking. Newton believed in God, Hawking an atheist. Is it just time and the advance of science that has led to the change? Or is there more to be said? Well, I think there's a lot more to be said. The problem is three things. False logic, false ideas about God, and false ideas about explanation. And I won't have time to do it all, but let me have a look at false logic. Here is the central statement of the book, The Grand Design. Because there is a law like gravity, the universe can and will create itself from nothing. What? <laughs> because there is a law like gravity, because there's something, the universe will create itself from nothing. What's that? A flat contradiction. Because there is a law like gravity, it doesn't say because gravity exists, but what would a law of gravity mean? If gravity doesn't exist, and if there is no material in the universe on which gravity acts, and behind that there lies a huge problem. It's a confusion that laws are creative. But they're not, you know. The laws of nature that we formulate mathematically are descriptions of what happens, but they're not causes. And they don't create anything. Newton's laws of motion never moved a billiard ball in the history of the universe. They describe the motion once somebody with a cue causes it. And this is a huge confusion. I once talked to Peter Atkins after a debate. I said, Peter, I'd never met him before. He's an atheist physical chemist at Oxford. I said, what created the universe? He said, mathematics. And I, I'm afraid I was rather rude. Uh, I confess that I started to laugh. He, and he was angry. He said, what are you laughing at? Well, I said, I really am sorry, Peter, but that's the silliest thing I've heard for a long time. He said, why? Well, I said, I am a mathematician. Let me put it this way. Two plus two equals four. Did that ever put four dollars in your pocket? You see, Peter, I said the financial crash was caused by some people who thought that mathematics can create money. You may have met people like that. It's called creative accounting. <laughs> so we need to be careful about these things. The idea of laws creating the universe is just sheer nonsense. But it's worse still. The universe will create itself. Well, if X creates Y, what does that mean? Roughly speaking, if you've got X, you'll get Y. If I say X creates X, what does that mean? Well, it means that nonsense remains nonsense, even if scientists talk it. You see, this statement of Hawking's is not even scientific in the sense of being rational. It's the heart of his argument for getting rid of God, ladies and gentlemen. And that's serious intellectually. When brilliant people write nonsense in order to get rid of God, that bothers me intensely because people accept it. And they think, that's it. There is no God. And I wrote my little book, God and Stephen Hawking, because a young man wrote to me. He'd been driving his car past a gas station. There was a big placard saying, Stephen Hawking says there's no God. And he was a Christian, and he started to shake, a young man without much formal education. And he wrote to me, and he said, if Stephen Hawking says there's no God, who am I, little me, to say there is. So I wrote a book to answer it. Because this is nonsense. But because he's brilliant, and he was brilliant, people accept it. Now contrast that with the biblical view. The universe made from nothing. Well, the biblical view is that the universe is not made from anything physical. But it's created by God, who's not nothing. But God is spirit. And ladies and gentlemen, what we're faced in contemporary society is the choice between God and nothing. I give lectures these days on nothing. Because we got to that position where nothing becomes 
the source of everything. And Lawrence Krauss is one of the people that did this in Arizona State University. And I read his book, A Universe from Nothing. Some of you may have come across it. Surely nothing, he writes, is every bit as physical as something, especially if it is to be defined as the absence of something. Pardon? If you go on the internet, you'll hear me debating this particular phrase. That's sheer nonsense. And if that's the way you're getting rid of God, there may be no God, of course, but that's not the way to get rid of God. And it bothers me 